Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palani Parmanika. We have a very, very special guest. His name is Dr. Akhil Palani Swami. He's an integrated medicine doctor. Integrated medicine means combining the general allopathic medicine with Ayurvedic medicine kind of uh, uh, practice. Uh, they have an integrated medicine fellowship here in the US. Um, so he, it's very, very difficult to find these kind of doctors now. So I thought without taking too much time, let me invite Dr. Palani Swami on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time, uh, Dr. Akhil. Um, welcome. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Dr. Pal, for inviting me. Perfect. Thank you. So we are so, so happy. I'm actually very, very glad. I was telling my audience that, you know, it is very, very difficult to find a person who has training in both allopathic medicine and also in integrated like Ayurvedic medicine and combining both together, in my opinion, is the way to go, is the way to go. Uh, so a little bit about uh, Dr. Akhil Palani Sami is, you know, he got trained in Harvard University, which is the top most university here in the US. And he did integrated medicine fellowship in University of Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and then he has been practicing this integrated medicine for the last 10 years. And he has written two books. The first book is called Paleo Vedic Diet, Wonderful Information. And now he has come up with this beautiful book called Tiger Protocol. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he's going to explain what type of protocol is, but I wanted to briefly mention that uh, I strongly believe that all the GI diseases is just mainly based on food. Yes. So food is medicine, and there is a reason that our ancestors have said that food is medicine. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm pretty sure that this, I mean, I read the book, The Tiger Protocol is all about food and how this can change everything. So, um, uh, Dr. Akhil, why, why don't you tell me what made you think to write about this and uh, what do you think about uh, having this as a treatment option for autoimmune diseases? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, over the past 20 years um, with my patients that have been the best teachers and I've seen more and more people with um, autoimmune diseases. And then uh, also, so these five root causes in the TIGER, the um, protocol, uh, also are important for the other big chronic diseases like um, heart disease, diabetes, obesity. Um, so it's, um, it's something that affects everything. Thing. Um, and uh, that's why I wanted to uh, put it together. And then the same things that treat autoimmune disease and the immune system help to prevent it. So if you're healthy, these following these steps will prevent the development of autoimmune disease because that can happen over 20, 30 years. It's a slow process. Nice, nice, nice. So um, when you see a patient, um, autoimmune diseases, which means that you know one uh, a person's own immunity uh, things that your body doesn't belong to you and it starts eating up your cells and starts damaging your tissues. What is the most common autoimmune disease you see these days and uh, how do you implement this tiger protocol to start with when you see these patients? Yes, that's exactly right. So the immune system is supposed to defend our body against uh, illness and infection, but in autoimmune disease, it um, goes amok and then starts attacking the, the body. So um, some of the most common autoimmune diseases that I see, there's over 100 different types, so a lot of variety, but they all have the same five root causes. Uh, so those in, um, diseases are multiple sclerosis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and uh, I do see also Crohn's disease and a lot of GI autoimmune disease. Okay, so let's say that, um, um, do you think obesity is autoimmune? <laughs> You know, a lot of the same, like, for example, toxins that drive um, immune dysfunction, also they're called obesogens. They are known to disrupt your metabolism and drive obesity. So um, I don't think obesity is autoimmune, but the same causes that drive autoimmune disease drive obesity, drive diabetes, drive heart disease. Right. In your experience, you think there is that an increased risk among Southeast Asian population, especially Indians? Yes. Uh, you know, unfortunately, um, in India, that's one of the fastest growing diseases, uh, autoimmune disease, um, and same in, in around the world. Um, now, one in five Americans have some type of autoimmune disease. And then globally, it's over 300 million people uh, who have some autoimmune condition. And India, unfortunately, is growing uh, rapidly increasing rates. Um, you know, when I was in medical school in India, um, 
if the patient comes with colitis, like inflammation of the colon, yeah. it was TB, no matter what. Yeah. We need to rule out TB first, regardless of whatever it is. But now, mm -hmm. I, I've been practicing in US for the last like 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um, here, TB is like unheard of. Uh, right. It would be like a very, very rare disease. You know, people go nuts. Oh, the patient has TB, TB, TB. But in India, if the patient doesn't have TB, then we go nuts. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. So here, um, so now I've been getting so many calls with my family, friends, relatives, and also for second opinion on Crohn's disease, ulcerative yes. colitis. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think that is increasingly getting common in Indian people? Yes, I do. Yeah, I think uh, um, especially the uh, GI autoimmune diseases like uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, um, increasing quite a lot in South Asians, Indians. Okay, okay. Um, so let's say that, you know, I'm a patient either with, um, you know, like I have belly fat, you know, I, I don't believe in allopathy. Yes. I come to you for integrated medicine practice, or I have a kid or I myself having some symptoms of GI diseases, and they labeled as Crohn's disease, and we come to you. Mm -hmm. um, um, how do you implement the Stiger protocol? Where do you start? Yes. So um, always I start with food, uh, working on the diet, because I agree with you. I think food is the main cause of, you know, not only GI disease, but other disease as well. Um, and so in the book, I, I give like hundreds of different foods that are healing so that people can choose. Uh, I have meal plans, recipes. And uh, so um, for each of these uh, causes, like let's start with, start with toxins, there are certain foods that help your body to detoxify. So uh, all of the leafy green vegetables are, you know, very good for that. And then cruciferous vegetables like the broccoli, cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, uh, those are also very good for your liver. And then one food that uh, is not as well known, uh, the beetroot and also the beet greens, the tops of the beetroot, if you can find them uh, attached, then those are very good for the liver. They have unique uh, compounds that strengthen your liver, which is your main detox organ. So all these uh, these foods are powerful and beet greens, you can either, you can cook them just like spinach or any leafy green. Nice, nice, nice. So in your tiger style protocols, T stands for toxins. Yes. And exactly. um, basically we are going to remove the toxins from the body, uh, mainly from the, mm -hmm. sometime from the liver. And these are all possible options that you could uh, use to basically detoxify. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Got it. And um, um, so do, if, if you see a patient, will you say that, hey, you know, you are not eating beetroot or you're not eating this, try to include that in your diet. Is it what, how you start? Yes, ab absolutely. Yeah. Uh, because I think it's better to try to add things to the diet that are healing rather than subtract or eliminate, uh, you know, too much. So the more healing foods you can add, the more it's going to help your overall health. Okay. I'm going to ask you a very tricky question. Okay, sure. <laughs> Let's say that uh, you know I would I cannot remove French fries from my plate. Yes. Okay. Okay. Will adding beetroot right next to the French fries will cancel the effect together? <laughs> well, that's a good that's a good question. Um, I think that um, you know it will partially offset because uh, all, it's all about the um, the balance, you know, the the good and the bad. And so, if you have an occasional treat, it's not going to completely ruin the you know uh, diet. But uh, the more you can shift towards the healthy foods and reducing uh, at least the frequency of those unhealthy foods, that will help. Right. You know, I always say that gut bacteria is like karma. Yes. You eat good foods, you get good karma. You right. eat bad foods, you get bad karma. And karma is a boomerang. It will bite you at the end. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, uh, so uh, in this Tiger Protocol, we talked about toxins. And in the book, yeah. there are lots of information about, you know, what are the other things that you could add? And um, this was mind blowing. And what does I stand for? Yeah, so I is infections. So this could include uh, things like bacteria, viruses, parasites, all different types of um, organisms that are can cause infections. And um, my approach is, uh, you know, in Ayurveda, we use spices as medicine because those are um, so powerful. So I think, uh, um, and then you also have to know how to use them. So for example, with garlic, um, you have to actually cut the garlic or crush it and wait 10 minutes for the allicin enzymes to make it, uh, to, to synthesize that. And so 
um, if you cook it right away, then you don't get those, um, you know, antimicrobial compounds. So we always uh, crush the garlic first, wait 10 minutes, and then the compounds are heat stable. So you can cook with it and it's not going to lose the effect. So uh, that's, for example, with garlic, how to use it. Nice, nice, nice. So this is, this has a, a particular potential against fighting against a particular infection or does it matter? It just increases the immunity. Exactly. Because my, my approach is, uh, you know, we should try to boost your own immune system and then allow it to take care of the infections like it's supposed to. Uh, you know, in Western medicine, of course, I prescribe, you know, antibiotics or drugs sometimes to target the specific um, germs. But uh, this approach is more just boosting your immune system so it will take care of the infections. Got it. Got it. And um, is there like a particular age group that this... Uh this intervention has to be implemented or including kids? Oh, well, I do see um, in a lot of children in my practice. Um, so un unfortunately, autoimmune disease now, even in um, those under age 10 is is, is not uncommon. And uh, um, so the whole spectrum, there's uh, adults, uh, older adults, uh, even children. I see. I see. Um, so please explain about the uh, G, G part. Yes. Yeah, G is all about the gut bacteria. Um, and uh, um, so, you know, one misconception that I want to address is um, in Ayurveda, uh, sometimes fermented foods are not recommended because they're, you know, sour foods. And so people might be confused why I'm recommending fermented foods in this uh, diet. And um, the reason is there's a study from Stanford that showed that adding fermented foods boosts your gut bacteria and also reduces 19 different um, markers of inflammation in the blood. Um, so over about uh, six weeks. So because of that research, that's why I, I recommend fermented foods a lot, like, uh, you know, yogurt and um, the um, sauerkraut. And also in the, you know, our culture, like the paleasor, you know, right. is, is a great way to get that. Right, 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 right. So I always say that, you know, um, in, in US, if you see uh, a homeless person, they are mm -hmm. very big. Because, yeah. you know, we feed them pizzas mm -hmm. and pasta, which was left over. But in, right. in India, before, uh, the homeless person are very lean because we feed yes. them paleo. Right, exactly. <laughs> they, they, they are getting the healthy foods. We feed <laughs> them leftover should. rice. We think right. that that is not good for us. And we go for pizza and pasta and we give them the leftover rice. And we are leftover right. eventually. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that's why I really encourage people, you know, dosa, idli, dokla, paleasor, whatever way you can incorporate fermented foods is healing. Yes, yes absolutely. I'm a big, big proponent of it. And uh, um, I always say two, fermented, two servings of fermented foods per day, which is... Uh, yes which is also has a proportion, which will increase a proportion of good bacteria versus bad bacteria. And yes. that will influence the signals to the brain controlling the appetite. And it is like a lot of other things that's going on that's not even visible on surface. Right, exactly. Yep. Just tip of the iceberg. And I did re read the section of the book. You have went very deep into that fermented foods and possible options. Yes. Um, uh, so so that is, that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> So uh, what does E stands for in Tiger Protocol? Yes, so eating uh, refers to adding in the, these healing foods. And um, another category besides fermented foods, they're called prebiotic foods. So these are foods that have uh, prebiotics, which are fibers that feed your unique uh, different bacteria. And the more variety of prebiotic foods you can eat, the more variety of gut bacteria you have. And that's key, the key marker for longevity and you know healthy immune system. So, um, so with prebiotic foods, I go through like also hundreds of different examples to give people options to choose from. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think... Uh, uh, it's broken down by the category, the type of prebiotic fiber, like uh, there's one called polyphenols, which is in like the green tea and berries and so forth. Then there's inulin, which is in uh, garlic, onions, artichoke is, uh, is quite good. And then there's a resistant starch. There's three different types, but oats are a, a great source, uh, as are the uh, green bananas, uh, you know, the plantains or the green bananas. Mm. Um, those are um, good as well. So there's many different categories like that. And I like to give many examples so people can choose. They don't have to eat all of them, but mm. picking some things that you can uh, add in, that's right. uh, the best way. Right. Are you a cook? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. In right? fact, uh, my, yeah, my, my wife and I put together the 35 recipes for this book specifically. So uh, those are all from my own kitchen. So the recipes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Right. Right. And actually, uh, Dr. Raquel lives here in California. So people yeah. who come to Northern California, please come to me. We'll all go together to his house and we'll enjoy these recipes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, all, yes, yes. All are, wel all are welcome, you know. <laughs> yes. so, so do you, you know, in gastroenterology, we always get this question that should they have to take this probiotic tablet? Yeah. Uh, what is in, in my, I'll tell you what GI literature says that probiotic doesn't actually... Uh, ha, uh, clearly improve the clinical outcome. It might help in a little bit, but that is not the holy grail. So you don't have yes. to take a artificial probiotic supplement if right. you can get a balanced diet in the uh, food. Um, when you practice integrated medicine, what will be your line of approach? Uh, yes, for most people as well, same thing. I think um, getting the fermented foods, which uh, have the live bacteria, and then in many cases, they might have um, hundreds of different uh, bacteria, whereas if you take a capsule, it might have, you know, five or 10, you know, different varieties. So it's uh, much better to get it through food, the fermented foods. And then also, there is good research on these prebiotic foods and how over time, those can lead to more sustainable changes in your gut bacteria, then taking those probiotic capsules, which are more short term, uh, you know, they only really work as long as you're taking them. But with the diet, there's long term benefits. So that's the difference. Yes, absolutely. I always say that this gut bacteria is going to revolutionize this yes. whole picture in the next like five, 10 years. Yeah, uh, you know, in India, how they um, you know arrange alliance based on mm -hmm. astrology, yeah. they need to do alliance based on gut bacteria. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, that's uh, interesting. And an, a related topic is the oral bacteria in the mouth. The microbiome there is very important for your immune system and um, inflammation. So taking good care of your teeth and, uh, um, you know, also uh, like things like tongue scraping, very good practice, oil pulling, uh, all are good for the oral microbiome. I see. I see. Um, if I it was me, I will do a website called guts.com. Yes. And then the time, the tagline will be marry me if you have guts. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. The gut wow. is the foundation for sure. Gut is the foundation. Gut is absolutely the foundation. So perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So so in this, is there is there any particular ratio that people need to use or it doesn't matter in the in the book, it, it describes all the food. Um, then you just pick and choose what you like or you uh, have some preferences. Um, yeah, I think that, um, you know, the, getting a variety of plant foods, that is really how to feed the bacteria. So whole grains, fruits, vegetables, uh, beans, uh, our dals are excellent, uh, nuts and seeds. So just getting the variety is very important because that's how all human beings evolved for millions of years. You know, the, we ate uh, uh, up to like 100 different types of plants in a week. And now the average uh, person's only eating 10, you know, including French fries and maybe mm -hmm. lettuce or, you know, not not too many vegetables. So um, that diversity is really important. So, uh, you know, I have been promoting something called Dr. Palitarian method. Okay. Oh, so yeah. You don't have to be a vegetarian. You don't have to be a non-vegetarian. Just like a hybrid. Yeah. This, we say that there is three meals a day, seven days a week, 21 meals a week. And of this, 10% could be non-vegetarian. Right. Like two non-veg and then remaining nine could be, I mean, remaining 19 could be vegetarian. Yes. But, uh, many people email me that there is no way we are going to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. They, they said that, you know, non-vegetarian has um, transitioned into our culture, into our diet, and it's available so commonly and so tasty. Yep. There is no way that I'm going to replace that. Um, what is the argument on, there is another argument about the carnivore diet, where hmm. you just go just yes. pure non-veg. What, what do you think oh. about it? Yeah, you know, I, I don't recommend that because uh, for some people, that's what's called an elimination diet, where you're eliminating a lot of foods. In that case, you're eliminating, you know, all plant foods. But any elimination diet, like there's many out there, should only be short term. So maybe 
people feel a difference in four weeks, six weeks. But if you stick on it long term, you, you're really starving the, the gut bacteria. You know, they're going to be hungry. They're not getting any food. Um, and in the long run, that's going to harm your, your health, the uh, right. loss of the gut bacteria. So right. um, I think that, um, yeah, even with uh, the paleo diet, which is what our ancestors ate in paleolithic times, it was mostly plant foods, you know, gathering roots and berries and leaves and then, the, you know, occasional hunt and fish. But, um, you know, it's hard if you ever tried to hunt or fish anything. It's, it's not very easy, you know, to, to get to succeed. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, uh, super, beautiful. And uh, what does R stands for in the Tiger Protocol? Yes. So R is rest. So that's something in Ayurveda, you know, very strong, the mind-body connection. And uh, But I want to tell people there's more than just meditation because not everybody likes meditation. Uh, for some people, going out in nature, doing exercise, uh, prayer or puja. Um, I think also there's gratitude practices, um, forgiveness practices. So a lot of different ways, but finding something you enjoy uh, that will give you that mental rest. Um, and then also part of that is getting enough sleep because most of us don't get enough sleep and that's important. And, and what does it do in a scientific level? Will, will that uh, activate yes. particular kind of neurons? Yeah, uh, yeah, it activates your parasympathetic nervous system. So that's the part of the nervous system that um, counteracts the chronic stress, you know, chronic fight or flight, sympathetic nervous system that most of us live in with modern life being so stressful. So all of these techniques activate the parasympathetic so in all cases, your body has what it needs to heal. You just need to activate it to strengthen it. So that's uh, the, the approach. Super, super. And in the book, you talk about the techniques of doing this uh, rest. And uh, I, I see that as well. So, you know, you could adopt and then try it out and then see which one will work for you. And then more importantly, you know, there is no point in just reading the book and then say, oh, it's a good book. Okay, next book, please. You, right. need, to, <laughs> you yes. need to implement yes. that in your uh, daily activities. And I'm pretty sure that the book is written in so simple sentences that anybody can easily adopt. Yes. Um, the uh, So let's say that I am the patient, right? So Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a scenario that is happening more commonly that, you know, 13-year-old, 14-year-old um, um, kids are getting diagnosed with Crohn's disease, ulcerative right. colitis, autoimmune disease, celiac disease, you name it, mm -hmm. uh, including multiple sclerosis. And then, you know, because I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm from India, uh, mm -hmm. people, Indian, I have a lot of Indian patients here. And, yes. Uh, they reach out to me and then they say, hey, Dr. Pal, what should I do? You know, this is... And then I say, you know, there are medications that you can do, we can control the disease. And then their main question is, why did this happen to me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do we have anything from an integrated aspect to, to reassure them or... <clears throat> Um, yeah, I think that, um, you know, now it's it's not so much about the genes and genetics, like what you inherited from your parents. Mm -hmm. I see some, most of the uh, autoimmune patients I see, there's no family history it's of autoimmune family. disease at all. So that's not a factor. And it's uh, unfortunately, these five causes becoming more problematic for everyone. You know, we're exposed to a lot more toxins. We're dealing with more infections like drug resistant bacteria. Our gut bacteria uh, microbiome is in worse shape than ever before. Eating our food quality is really deteriorated. And then we're not getting enough rest. So these five causes are like the perfect storm. You know, all of them are triggering our immune system to um, function poorly. So you, um, what I'm inferring is that, uh, you know, in my allopathic medicine, I mean, you, you have tried yes. medicine, you have studied medicine as well. In our syllabus, if you yep. read the etiology, most of the time it says autoimmunes or idiopathic. Idiopathic means we right. just don't know why it happens. Yes. But I think in the last five years or even a decade, I think we are getting to the idiopathic reason. Mm -hmm why it could be. Um, the reason it was idiopathic before was this was not all this, the tiger thing that you're talking about is not being connected as the right. reason for this disease before. But now we are saying that you know all your lifestyle practices might be the way, uh, way to go. Um, but the other question is, these kids are so young, you know, like yes. 12, 13. Do you think the stress, relaxation, I mean, the diet uh, can happen at such an early age? 
Um, yeah, in those cases, in those cases, it's usually not stress or the the mind body thing as so much. Um, it's more driven by toxins, I believe, uh, because they've studied even newborns in the you know hospital. They have um, over two hundred different toxins in the umbilical cord blood, you know, and a lot of them are you know from uh, pregnancy and mother and father. They're they're transmitted. So unfortunately, kids are exposed to toxins uh, from birth onward, and then. Um, I think that's a big, big driver there. Wow, wow, wow! Interesting. The um, and there's also this hereditary thing as well. Yes. Um, you know, we talked about that. This autoimmune doesn't have to have be uh, doesn't have to be transmitted through genes. Yes. What I mean by that is, let's say a Crohn's disease patient. Um, if a father doesn't have a particular gene causing Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. uh, and the son can have the same gene causing Crohn's disease. Uh, but the other genetic component is if the patient father has a bad bacteria or mother yes. has bad bacteria in the small intestine, it can be transmitted from generation to generation, as you know. Right. Um, and right. one interesting study is, you know, kids born through cesarean section mm. yes. have more bad bacteria in their gut compared to right. the kid born through vaginal delivery because they can swallow mm -hmm. all the microbes while they are traveling. Yes. The general canal. Uh, is that translating into anything big? Research is in progress. And there is something that these kids might be at increased risk of obesity. But uh, I think there is some connection over there. Yes. Um, so if it was my kid, you know, I have a five-year-old. I want to make sure that, you know, he doesn't develop any of this autoimmune diseases that I can prevent as much as possible. Mm -hmm. What will you say? Yes. Yeah, I always say, you know, make it uh, a family affair to do all the healthy behaviors, healthy activities, uh, you know, go outside, go for a walk with your children, you know, with your spouse. Um, and uh, that way you'll get um, sunlight, you'll get vitamin D, which is great for your immune system, you'll be sweating, you'll clear, you know, toxins by sweating. Um, uh, and also um, shopping for food and cooking together, eating meals together, that ensures a lot healthier meals than if you're eating fast food or, you know, eating uh, on the go. So cooking meals together as a family always improves the food quality. What if my wife is a vegetarian, I'm a non-vegetarian, what should I do? Oh, <laughs> then <laughs> I think uh, you you better, uh, you, you know, you have to have a happy wife. So whatever you want, <laughs> I change to vegetarian. <laughs> that's the goal. Yeah. That, in that case, throw everything else out. It's <laughs> <laughs> nothing else matters if your wife is unhappy. <laughs> nice, nice. So I want to wrap the session by asking about Crohn's disease. Yes. Um, so in your practice, have you seen people implementing this protocol and then either controlling the disease or actually reversing the disease? Yes. I mean, as you know, Crohn's disease is very difficult to treat, uh, often can be very aggressive and a patient needs multiple medications. Um, and so we have to do everything. We have to address the toxins, address the infections, heal the gut, uh, work on the diet, add more rest. And then that's just the beginning because that's once you get those five root causes, it's like your, if the car, if the immune system was a car, it's like it's dry, out of control, you know, and so you're taking away those five causes, you're slowing the car down. And then that's when you add uh, other things that w are more powerful to what we call modulate the immune system to help quiet it, like uh, fasting. There's a lot of research on the benefits of fasting for quieting the immune system, but it's a lot more effective if you address those five causes first and then implement these things. Right, right. So uh, I'm a big uh, proponent of uh, circadian rhythm. Um, yes. So in my channel, all I talk about mainly is about, yeah. uh, hey, you know, if you give rest to your hormones overnight, you get some sleep. So I tell all the time that if you eat by seven, yes. go to bed by 10, you wake up in the morning at six, mm -hmm. I will not have any business. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not Fifty percent of the problem is is gone. Is right. gone the, by exactly. disturbing the circadian rhythm. So, um, is in your in Ayurveda, when I whenever I say that, they always I always encourage to promote uh, hydration, water intake yes. before and after meals, so that you you include that eight cups of water per day. In your Tiger Protocol, water is being included somewhere. Oh, yes, um, that's uh, essential. You know, uh, I call it uh, pre-tox. Before you can detox, you need to pre-tox with the right steps of preparation. So hydration, drinking plenty of water, 
uh, making sure your digestion and elimination, your bowel movements are regular. All those things are important for the, uh, the process. So can you briefly talk about fiber as well? How is that included and which part did you say? Maybe gut microbiome, the G yes. part maybe? Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, so with fiber, all of these different prebiotic foods uh, are the, the good fiber sources. So knowing like which are the right vegetables and fruits to add in and then picking and choosing what you enjoy, you know, that's the way to get more of these uh, uh, fiber because then it's more sustainable. You know, you're not forcing yourself to eat things maybe you don't like, but you're picking things that you do like. Super, super. Sounds good. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice. Wonderful, wonderful session. Beautiful points was discussed. The book is available both in India and Amazon link and also in US and Amazon link. I will add the link in the description. Um, he has his beautiful book at the background, the yellow book, the tiger protocol. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So please check it out. Please check his previous book as well. And he's doing a wonderful service. I have personally seen a couple of patients who is following up with him. And uh, my vision of integrated medicine is being practiced by him, which is, uh, I'm very, very proud of what he is doing. Um, so um, Dr. Akhil, so if you want to wrap the session up and then say, you know, if you want to take home points, of how I can implement this for obesity, fat loss, or any kind of long-term lifestyle improvement, yes. um, what are the topics that you should say that we should focus on and some take-home points, please? Oh, sure. <clears throat> yeah, so I think uh, one thing that is very important is the mindset, you know, like having the right belief, having the right um, perspective, because that's something we often forget. But uh, many of my patients have said that I'm the first doctor who's told them that they can feel better you know, and they, that they can get better because mm. we know many of these diseases are lifelong, but we have to have the right positive mindset, you know, mm -hmm. like believing you can feel better, believing you can get better. Uh, and then once you implement all those steps, like working on d detox and working on your diet and um, working on mind body, they are, they work a lot better because you're using, uh, you have the right mindset going in and that makes a really big difference for the success. Super, super. I mean, you have hit the nail on the head kind of thing. You know, the um, uh, positive mindset, positivity also helps in losing weight as well. If you keep on saying that I'm not losing weight, losing weight, anxiety kicks in. And uh, the whole pyramid of constellation of symptoms just don't go anywhere. So um, I absolutely agree with you. But anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, coming to the show. Uh, this is such a valuable information. I learned a lot from the book and I would highly recommend everybody to get this book and then see uh, for yourself and then try to implement these practices on a daily basis. Thank you so much, Dr. Yes. Thanks a lot. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Pal. And also, I really um, admire what you're doing as well with uh, educating people, teaching them about the food and fasting and circadian rhythm. You know, I think more of us need to be out there and especially you're able to do it with uh, such a great sense of humor. That's what I always appreciate. So, <laughs> Thank you. That's why I practice allopathic medicine so that I can do the humor here. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> right. Right. Anyways, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you, Dr. Pal. Yeah.